Is it still too dark? Uh, no, it's good. We're going to go live now. Okay. Okay, good evening, Simone. How nice to be with you. How are you? Uh, this is Medea Benjamin with Code Pink, and we'll be in conversation with Simone Chun, who is a professor and also a member of the Korea Peace Network and a member of Women Cross the DMZ. We were together in South Korea in May. In fact, we were buddies in the buddy system. So it's wonderful to talk to you tonight. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. So there's a lot of confusion about what is happening between the US and North Korea. And I wondered if you could give us an update of what has happened since the summit between uh, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. You know, first of all, I think we should also point out that uh, what has not happened, that is, uh, there has been no um, missile test, there's no nuclear test from North Korea. And also uh, another very important thing will be the suspension of uh, US-Korea uh, war game, joint military exercises. And, uh, and also there has been, um, um, you know, no really harsh bellicose rhetoric uh, between North Korea and the United States. And those are important, you know, the, we take it for granted, but these are important. And uh, um, going back to what happened since the Singapore summit, uh, two major development. One is the one that we will probably talk more about in depth uh, later is uh, uh, Secretary of uh, State Pompeo's visit to North Korea, uh, which you know has been there has been some controversy, uh, but still, nevertheless, this was the uh, first, the uh, highest level um, uh, talk uh, after the Singapore summit. Um, and uh, this, you know, in spite of all the criticism and controversies that it raised. Um, what you are hearing is that this has been uh, there has been very uh, frank uh, talk between North Korea and the United States, and that we can talk more about about the Pompeo visit later. And what came out the the second one is obviously the most important one. That is the um, the general military office level of uh, talks between North Korea and the United States at the Panmunjom, uh, which then led to the agreement of the repatriation of uh, uh, fallen soldiers, uh, American soldiers, uh, remainings of uh, American soldiers were unaccounted. Um, and uh, uh, so these are the important development. And uh, with regard to repatriation of those uh, soldiers, uh, looks like uh, probably on July 27th, uh, which will be 60, Five anniversary of the armistice of the Korean War, the halted the Korean War, um, there may be about 55 uh, remains of uh, U.S. soldiers uh, will be uh, returned from North Korea. And uh, so these are very significant development, uh, you know, again, in spite of all the criticism and, uh, uh, um, you know, pessimistic uh, view, so I think we should focus on the, you know, for, uh, for, for us, I think we should really, um, we should not take it for granted all this progress that have been made. Can you just explain a little more about the remains of the US soldiers? These are soldiers who were killed during the uh, Korean War. So sometime between 1950 and 1953, mm -hmm. how many remains do they think that uh, North Korea has? Why does this take so long to resolve? Yeah, uh, first of all, right, I think the estimates about currently about 7,700 uh, uh, soldiers, right, who are unaccounted. And uh, uh, we're not sure exactly how many North Koreans uh, have right now, but, uh, you know, it depending on, it has, this has been obviously the important thing that, again, we have to remember, this has been uh, almost uh, 11 years since the last attempt to, you know, uh, attempt for the repatriation of those uh, soldiers. And uh, so, as I said, um, as I said that, uh, um, 
you know, uh, uh, the first, uh, uh, you know, returning of those remains will be uh, July 27. We're talking about about 55. And the reason why it take it has taken so long is obviously so with the um, complete sort of a breakdown of, uh, you know, um, talk between North Korea and the United States. You remember the entire, even, you know, Obama era where the strategic patients really did not lead to any sub you know, substantial talk between two uh, United States and North Korea. That is, I think, biggest you know, cause for the uh, lack of cooperation. And as, as again, I said, this almost, you know, the first time in 11 years that we are, um, you know, this very important humanitarian issues is addressed. And uh, even this one, as we saw, right, this was, uh, I think, the important thing we have to remember is that this was the, one of the most concrete agreement between it's that came out from the Singapore summit, right? The, uh, and uh, the fact that we could now start, I think this is great news. And uh, and again, you know, going back to your question, why it took so long, it's basically with the harsh, you know, a reality is a lack of a lack of a diplomacy between uh, United States and North Korea, even on this humanitarian issue. And uh, what I heard from uh, Korean uh, media is that the, you know, during the high military general level of a talk held in just a few days ago, you know, uh, Secretary of the spokesperson from Secretary of State said that it was very productive. A very, you, you, North Korea did not pose any conditions. Uh, it was very, you know, good meeting. So I think that we're going to expect a more, more very uh, speedy progress with regard to this particular. Um, uh, 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 negotiation. And um, one more thing, I think we should also remember that, you know, we, I recall that, uh, uh, you know, be, between United States and United States had the uh, remains, repatriation of those remains from during Vietnam era, it created a lot of goodwill and, uh, you know, trust building, which, you know, led to a, you know, normalization of uh, between uh, United States and Vietnam. So I think this could be obviously serve as a similar sort of, uh, um, um, you know, um, incentive. Now, you said that since the summit, there hasn't been bellicose rhetoric, but it was mm -hmm. reported in the U.S. press that even though uh, Mike Pompeo said it was a productive visit when he went to North Korea, that the North Koreans uh, came out and said that the U.S. was using gangster-like tactics. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile that? You know what? Okay, that was a little bit of an exaggeration. And the, what I'm hearing is that the North Korea was obviously... Um, really stressed the need for the uh, getting security guarantee from the United States uh, in the form of either having a some kind of political declaration among North and South Korea, the United States uh, that ends the Korean War, uh, preferably uh, you know, July, uh, as early as soon as possible, preferably even July 27 during the 65th anniversary of the Armistice of the Korean War, but which, you know, obviously is not going to happen, it's too soon. Um, but the United States apparently uh, insists on Pompeo, um, is insisting on more uh, denuclearization first, and then lifting economic sanctions and etc. So close to, I don't know, Pompeo insists on CBID, but uh, that Can you was- explain what CBID is, please? CBID means that basically it's a complete, um, you know, a verifiable, irreversible denuclearization uh, which is, you know, many critics will say this is non-starter, right? And which has been the policy of the United States, which, and uh, which uh, really, in fact, it was the, uh, that, you know, um, led to the failure of a breakdown of a previous uh, negotiation. So the, the, according to the report that there has been the main issue and uh, however, you know, as you as 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 the New York Times, you know, the way they put it, gangs like tactic that has been uh, even not only it was uh, exaggeration, but it was also uh, mistranslation. It was not the uh, actual translation of uh, uh, North Korea's statement. And uh, in the North Korean, but there was also, it was more like a robber like um, you know. Uh, uh, phrase that will be more accurate, and uh, but nevertheless, I think the one other uh, that, that I've heard from Korean sources that, especially actually from those who are very uh, following the uh, development, they said that this was actually North Korea and United States had a very frank discussion, and they, they said it was actually the you know North Korea gave a clear sort of a clearest uh, uh, sort of idea with regard to what they would like to, you know, what they want in this denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula issue. So I think that that there was, a, a, it was some, a little bit, you know, uh, um, unbi biased, uh, uh, biased report of US media. I don't think that there was an accurate 
of the you know, portrayal of the uh, Pompeo's visit. But you do agree that there's a fundamental difference between uh, the North Koreans wanting the peace treaty uh, mm -hmm. first and then denuclearization mm -hmm. uh, and the U.S. wanting the denuclearization to lead to a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, imagine that the way North Korea, the way United States want is the, you know, uh, denuclearization uh, first and then um, lifting sanctions and then eventually as a, some um, hardliners like to have as a reward, right, of the peace treaty. Imagine if, you know, the thing that we have to remember is to, the Korean War has not ended as United States can, it is a, it's a current state of war. If United States want any time, it can you know start war you know right away, and and North Korea even the, the reason why North Korea developed nuclear weapons is you know you have to remember this is uh, this, although some people may uh, you know uh, may not agree with that it was for the uh, defense it was for their survival uh, as you recall you know after the uh, collapse of Soviet Union the you know the collapse the, the disintegration of the you know Cold War. You know, South Korea was able to normalize with uh, uh, now the Russia. South Korea was able to normalize with uh, uh, China. So in the Northeast Asia, you would call that, you know, Cold War really has, uh, has ended. The only where the Cold War still remain is basically North Korea, uh, the relationship with the United States and North Korea and Japan. So um, this is, a, so that's why, you know, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, North Korea has, uh, you know, has a very, the, the, this, their insecurity has a, a tremendously increased. And if you believe that North Korea's development pursuit of nuclear weapons is sort of a, a survival, it is, it is logical to, to provide some, you know, very, um, you know, the security guarantee, which North Korea wants. Uh, so I think that if you look at the South, uh, what's happening right now, it looks like uh, we will see some kind of political declaration um, signed among the heads of a three country that is North and South Korea and United States. Uh, it could come as early as maybe, um, um, August, maybe, or at least in September at the United Nations. So uh, what that means is that, the, uh, as we point out, as I pointed out earlier, you know, U.S. wants denuclearization first, but North Korea would would want some kind of a, a phased, a synchronized approach and uh, with a very credible, uh, you know, uh, security guarantee from the United States and and also. Uh, most importantly, one thing that we really uh, have to remember, especially uh, from the Singapore summit, is establishing um, peace regime, uh, not only on the Korean Peninsula and the entire Northeast Asia. And, and some might say, what is this peace regime means? Peace regime means a little bit, it's a broader. Uh, what that means is that not only denuclearization of North Korea, it will be denuclearization of the entire uh, Korean Peninsula and also the uh, uh, Northeast Asia and normalization among these countries, especially normalization between Japan, North Korea, normalization between United States and North Korea and having North Korea as this, right now, as you know, that's complete economy that is uh, isolated, embed those, embed those Northeast economy within Northeast Asia, uh, uh, economic you know a system so that will what it means is that you know uh peace regime so i think that that's probably you know what north korea wants and we'll see if you know if the uh, united states can't um you know accommodate or support that well what is this agreement that you talk about that might be signed in september consistent yeah, I, you know, I could be wrong, but I think there is good indication that uh, it may happen. So what it is, is that uh, it will be literally it is a symbolic gesture, political uh, declaration among uh, three countries, North and South Korea and United States and possibly China. Uh, what it means is that we're literally saying that the North uh, the Korean War has ended. What that will mean, it will serve as an interim uh, phase before fully signing a uh, uh, a formal peace treaty, right? So peace treaty, as you recall, you will need a United States Senate has to ratify, right? So especially at this this climate where that you know we have a, uh, a democratic uh, 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 Congress that is not so supporting uh, uh, Donald Trump and also North Korean policy in general, so we will it will be a little bit hard. So it will take a longer time for to have a full formal peace treaty. So so 
So, so what, what they are trying to do, especially from South Korea and also uh, to some in North Korea, is that have this political, uh, somewhat symbolic, but nevertheless declaration says the Korean War has ended. Then it will sort of interim a security guarantee to North Korea. What they will do is to immediately it will really facilitate more greater inter-Korean um, uh, engagement. And also, it will have a huge impact. And uh, personally, because uh, you will, we will see uh, sort of almost permanent suspension of U.S. South Korea war game, which will also help North Korea. They will, you know, every time when the U.S. North South Korea engage in this war game, North Korea has to mobilize the agents. They have to ship all their, you know, resource they have for the for uh, responding to this very you know, bellicose war game. And uh, so I think that if, if there's a permanent suspension of a war game, it will also help North Korea to shift their, you know, more focus on the economy rather than uh, um, and they are more, uh, their, their response to military uh, uh, game. Um, and also it will, the, the political declaration will also tremendously also help to uh, even, um, you know, maybe lifting some of the travel bans for imposed on Americans, uh, citizens to North Korea, etc. So I think that, again, going back to your question, this will serve interim uh, political security guarantee in North Korea, but nevertheless, it will have, it will, another, it will be step by step that will eventually uh, more lead to a permanent peace treaty. Well, it's hard to imagine with the atmosphere in the United States, the criticism of President Trump for the summit itself, and then for putting a halt on the military exercises, and the way that it's been portrayed as capitulation on the part of uh, Trump for him to be able to sign anything in September uh, that would uh, seem like further compromise before there is any significant uh, movement around denuclearization. So uh, why is the media and the Democrats, what is the position that they've been taking and how uh, difficult is that making the next moves? I, at this point, as, one, as a former uh, unification uh, minister of uh, South Korea who served in the, you know, uh, former president Kim Dae-jung who implemented sunshine policy, I point out that uh, he said there are right now the biggest obstacles for the uh, peace process of the Korean Peninsula are uh, American media and neocon uh, security establishment. And also he pointed out there was a Democratic Congress. Uh, you know, as I actually, as a part of a Korea Peace Network, I did, a, 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 I visited the senators, you know, from our group, six senators, right after the Singapore summit. And uh, as I, you know, mentioned in the several other interviews, I was just, uh, I was just shocked by the, truly just a, a, a you know lack of support from you know democrats you know we, we usually associate democrats more for peace and uh, for people and democracy but here there's so, so much uh, uh, kind of obst obstructionist uh, you know we already know that there's simply you know there's stronger anti-trump sentiment anything that trump does cannot be supported and also in the military so even the very liberal so-called progressive media they point out that you know uh, basically they're they're in, with regard to north korea uh, issue is so biased and the, so there has been really this is almost impossible to get the truth about the you know north korea so i think those are really um uh really you know it's, it's, uh, uh, obstacles um but that being said though i think um you know, Trump, uh, he's, uh, if, you, if you look at what he has done so far, uh, and also a statement that he made today, um, I think that there's a good chance that, there, you know, still he might be able to sign the, the, uh, what this particular political declaration that end Korean War. A, they already agreed in the, um, in the Singapore summit. Uh, B, uh, he also mentioned that, you know, before even the Singapore summit, he mentioned several times Korean War, you know, let's, you know, the, he mentioned about ending Korean War. Um, and also there is what I'm hearing is that it's a sort of level of negotiation, diplomatic sort of a, 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 a negotiation, especially from South Korea to, you know, base, to, to trying to convince the United States to, uh, you know, sign the, uh, the uh, 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 political declaration to end the Korean War. Um, so, in, in, and one more um, uh, rationale will be this argument made by some Korean uh, analysts are actually this signing this political declaration that end the Korean War and also even peace treaty will expedite the process of 
uh, denuclearization of North Korea. And actually, in fact, it benefited uh, many, many, you know, people are making argument. It actually helped, you know, the what the United States wants. So I think if we make the, the you know, make such a strong case and educate the American public, and there's enough support, probably I think that there is a. I see that it's 50-50. We will have that, uh, you know, uh, uh, declaration. So given the opposition in the U.S. media and the opposition from a lot of the Democrats in Congress, uh, when uh, you and I were there and we were there with women yeah. across the DMZ, the message that we were getting from the South Koreans was mm -hmm. no matter what they do in the U.S. and even if Trump tries to uh, push back, the peace train has left the station and North and South are moving forward. So can you tell us what's happening in terms of uh, moves on the part of the North and the South? You know, I was just, uh, in fact, just uh, today, I was just reading, following some of the uh, inter-Korean, I mean, latest inter-Korean um, um, initiative. I mean, it's just almost every day we have this, you know, uh, 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 update. So for instance, it was, it, it was July 17th. Uh, the Koreans are, there's a, a the conference about the uh, uh, possibility of inter-Korean uh, IT uh, cooperation. So what it means is that now this is the, you know, a, a conference uh, by the business, right, uh, 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 groups, and they're proposing that you, you South and North Korea should uh, um, uh, have joined a project about the IT, and also they're, they're forming task force they're talking about uh, revive, uh, resuming the reopening the Kaesong Industrial Park. Um, there's also can you, you know, explain, can you explain what the Kaesong Industrial Kaesong Park? Kaesong Industrial Park. That means that was uh, uh, the um, inter-Korean. Obviously, it was a very successful inter-Korean uh, joint business um, uh, project. Uh, what this is, the Koreans will provide the capital, I mean, the investment, and also the all the technology and also the uh, uh, machines that uh, pro uh, to produce the uh, mostly the light consumer goods, textile companies, etc. And the North Korea will in guessing, obviously guessing is in North Korea, will provide the land and the labor and also other um, uh, materials. So this has been, this was part of the Sunshine Project but from the Sunshine period when Korea to Korea we had the, you know, the, the opening policy and that this was shut down by previous, uh, previous uh, you know, uh, 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 President Park Geun-hye, who was impeached, and uh, so right now the Koreans, uh, biz all you know, business groups are very strongly, um, uh, you know, uh, if they're uh, people are expecting that the reopening of a Kaesong Industrial Park very soon, um, maybe in the fall. Um, there's also, uh, you know, the rail inter-Korean railroad um, uh, um, adventure, which what they perceive is that you know uh, Koreans can. If you look at some of those, uh, uh, you know, especially with the, the UN sanctions, um, investment in infrastructure can be exempt from the uh, UN sanctions. So Koreans are not only not only that, Koreans uh, the, the the two Koreans are really met in this in June. They uh, agreed on uh, working on that the reopening those railroad that connects North and South Korea, and uh, there is a. a Probably you already know about the unification basketball game and unific and also there's going to be inter-Korean um, um, the theater groups, the cinemas, arts, etc. So um, the these we don't hear much about from the US media, but if you look at Korean news, almost every day there's some you know there's initiatives and very concrete uh, steps being made. And in fact, once a Korean uh, analyst says, you know, we should really we don't know when the uh, somewhat a little bit more ideal and optimistic view. They say we don't know when the sanctions going to be you know lifted, right? So we have to what they're saying that we should all get ready, right? So as soon as when you know when there are more you know opportunity, we should just be ready to you know to start. So I think that as you as you and I heard in Korea, um, you know Koreans whether Americans are on board or not, you know this peace train has left, and the analogy that we made was you know why well, you know the train you cannot really I mean it's hard to make a U turn right. Is uh, once the train has left, you can you might stop, but it's it's hard to you know make going back. So that is that is the idea, and I, I really see that there is this uh, uh, enormous opportunity and commitment. And what about family reunification? Can you explain what that issue is when the last uh, programs were and when that might start again? You know, again, this is a uh, this is another um, uh, 
really, I mean, something that, you know, touches the, you know, the hearts of many Koreans. And there's, you know, as you know, the Korean War left about 10 million separated family. As you call the, 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 the tragedy of this is most people at the time didn't know that, you know, the, their, uh, their uh, separation would have been permanent, right? So it has been uh, literally, you know, 65, 68 years. And uh, um, so we're going to have, again, one of the, uh, the uh, um, uh, progress from the, uh, the Panmunjom Declaration and also Singapore Summit is that, you know, re resuming this uh, family reunion, we're talking about since I would say about uh, 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 since the formal registration of a separate family started in Korea, more than 150,000 uh, 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 separate family have registered. And, uh, you know, less than 20,000 people were able to you know, have some kind of reunion through the in-person in reunion or video. And anyway, so um, in August, uh, as a result of the permanent decoration in August, there's going to be, you know, the, um, res uh, res we're going to resume the um, uh, reunion of the separate family members. The problem is, you know, it, uh, each side, they're going to get only 10 uh, family uh, uh, members, right? No, the 100, I'm sorry, 100. So it'll be only 200 family members. Out of, we're talking about really uh, thousands of uh, 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 family members. And in South Korea, it will be, it'll be done in the lottery uh, system. So basically most people in the, who are the separated uh, family, there are, you know, about more than, you know, 60, 70% of them are actually, you know, above age, 80s older and most likely um, you know very tragically they won't be able to you know most people will pass you know pass away without ever being able to meet their uh, loved ones in and in, in, in north and but any anyway uh, again this uh, the family union has been halted since the because you know since the um during the conservative administrations and now we are just about to start and it's going to be august will be the you know first uh, in years. And again, the problem is though, you know, it's only one time, one time uh, reunion, no Korean family ever, you know, was able to meet again. And it's all a very selected, you know, a groups, very, very small, small number of people will be able to reunite with their loved ones. And moreover, and in, in the United States also, you know, that we have Korean Americans, we have uh, uh, relatives, we have family members in North Korea, right? 100,000 uh, 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 Korean Americans who cannot, you know, who could not, who have not been able to uh, reunite with their loved ones in North Korea. So this is a huge humanitarian disaster and crisis. I think that we should really, uh, we should really, uh, uh, you know, stress. So you've talked about the, you mentioned the sanctions, mm -hmm. um, but the, the, could you talk a little bit about the uh, terrible effect that the sanctions are still having on the North Korean people and then maybe uh, let us know if you feel like the Chinese have eased up on all on those sanctions at all and uh, what that might do to alleviate some of the suffering. Yeah, what I want, you know, I want to actually start maybe a little bit good news. According to the here I'm reading report about the uh, latest survey done released by uh, uh, UNICEF, uh, looks like there has been some progress, but nevertheless, this is the dire condition. Uh, the progress in, in what, Simon? Uh, progress in the uh, you know uh, in the especially in the um, some of those you know worst humanitarian crisis in North Korea during you know like a compare with North Korea was under famine in 1990s so we are in that it's not as as bad as that time but nevertheless this is here I'm looking at very concrete because of specifically the most important one is here. Because of all this very uh, you know, hardline uh, policy, lack of engagement, lack of diplomacy, um, this report says that uh, in 2017, it says only 31% of the uh, requested funding, I'm, we're talking about uh, UNICEF, right? Request funding has been received. And 2018, the funding, again, these are the, you know, these are funding you go to most vulnerable people, you know, like a, a, a pregnant woman, an infant, and elderly and sick. In 2017, only nine percent of the some of those uh, requests of funding from UNICEF has you know has been coming has been received. What it means that this is direct result of a uh, UN, US led, and also South Korea are participating, other countries are participating in sanction. And uh, as we pointed out, was, you know research so again and again and again sanctions 
really do not affect the elite. Sanctions do not really affect those nuclear programs. Sanctions, are, it is a form of a warfare. It is mostly, you know, it, it, it affects the most vulnerable uh, uh, people in North Korea. And uh, as you know, as I do, 10.3 million people or 41% of the total population in North Korea undernourished. And, and uh, you know, I met with doctor, American doctor who went to, you know, who has been visiting North Korea annual, you know, a missionary visit and taking care of those uh, patients visiting North Korea. And he told me he was just shocking in a major, we're talking about major, you know, hospital in North Korea, very basic things aren't there. Clean water, even penicillin. And so this has, again, you know, this is human made, man made, uh, if not American policy made uh, disaster. Um, and also, I think I read another report about the, you know, uh, those, you know, the, the American NGOs who have been doing amazing job uh, for years. They could not even, you know, they they have to even stop their, uh, uh, you know, humanitarian uh, um, engagement with North Korea. So again, I think going back to your point, um, I actually agree, disagree with the other people who says, you know, well, denuclearization first and you know sanctions as a reward data. But I would say, as one of our, you know, the our um, delegation to the, the to Korea in May said it, you know, to me. These uh, 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 st uh, sanctions against that specifically affect that have a devastating effect on the uh, most vulnerable people in North Korea should be lifted immediately. You know, before even before the new denuclearization process. And I think I cannot, you know, I, I cannot stress you know, uh, enough about that. Yeah. Um, so maybe as we wrap up, you could tell us any other messages or things that people can do. It seems like you've been saying that people should contact their Congress people and say that they support the, uh, the talks, the, the denuclearization and the peace process and that sanctions should be lifted. Are there any other things you should suggest that people do? Uh, I, one thing I think we should, we, I, we wanted to, I wanna emphasize the importance of uh, you know, this, this process. This one is very somewhat unique uh, and it's very special. It is especially, you know, uh, led by two Koreas, in my view. It is two Koreas initiative, no matter which way to look at it. And I really, I have never seen such a sort of a, a, a you know, momentum that, uh, and two Korea have been very, you know, um, you know, in, in the, under the harshest right now, the, uh, you know, the sanctions regime, um, Again, the, this current sanction is almost like, as you know, uh, is like economic embargo against North Korea. And, uh, um, you know, people like to compare with, oh, you know, how about the, you know, the sunshine policy? Uh, the, the, there's really, I would say, even no comparison between the political climate of the sunshine policy and now. Right now is, is, is the most, uh, two Koreas engaging, trying under the harshest and the most difficult condition. So I think that has to be uh, uh, pointed out. And in spite of that, um, as you know, you have you and I are following very closely. I mean, since especially from this year, the Pyeongchang Olympic and through the Panmunjom Declaration and the Singapore Summit, what we have seen is that in a way the, the Korean people who have, uh, who have a really the strong will and determination as we point out the earlier with the analogy of peace train, no matter what United States uh, is going to do or whatever, even all the hardliners or even media and also maybe Democratic, Demo mm. the Congress that may not be so supportive, to Korea are determined to uh, move forward. And we, I think we should really give full support um, to the Koreans who on the ground, especially in those people you and I met, those women's group and those right now in Korea, all over there's you know, youth, young people, youth groups are you know, uh, uh, mobilizing to sign, to demand peace treaty, uh, peace letter. And uh, so we really, I hope the US media really more focus on people uh, in Korea who are doing this very difficult, but nevertheless, a very uh, courageous work on the ground. And, and then we can, you and I, and also in our groups and in, in, in us in the United States can amplify so that, uh, you know, A, um, lift the sanctions, especially as soon as possible, especially those that affect the most vulnerable people. And secondly, take the, um, give a, uh, you know, um, a secure guarantee, peace treaty, political technique that end the Korean war. And also 
um, you know, American Congress can support, members of Congress can support those uh, resolution that is right now in the US, uh, uh, in, in US Congress about the union of uh, separate family members in the United States. And I hope the similar resolution, the resolution go to the Senate in the Senate version so we can support it. And most importantly, I think that the uh, um, bipartisan, bipartisan support for, uh, for the current initiative. And I think that should be interest, that will interest, you know, they'll benefit not only Koreans and also for the United States as well. So I hope that uh, uh, I still remain uh, optimistic and uh, I hope that we continue, you know, fight and, and in solidarity with the amazing people. Wonderful. Well, thank you for bringing it back to the issue that this is really an initiative that has been moved by waves of people in the Korean Peninsula and that no matter what people think about Donald Trump, this is about the people in the Korean Peninsula and that we have to love peace more than we dislike Donald Trump. So let's move forward. Uh, you can sign the People's Peace Treaty on the codepink.org website. And thank you so much for Simone for a wonderful recap of what's been happening and a lot of enthusiasm about the way forward. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.